Welcome to Crimson Guitars. Welcome to episode 102 of the Luthiers livestream. This is a question and answer livestream thing where I answer your questions about guitar building and and the like. It is Sunday evening. It is it is a new year. It is rather cold in the workshop, but uh, hey, that's uh, that's what we've got. Uh, so welcome to welcome to the chaos. Okay, we've got uh, David Oddie, the David Oddie, Borgardian Evolution, Anomalous Botch, Walden Guitar Works, Garage Master Guitars, Paul Needs, Old Man Bill, Old Man Bill, Goth Rider Creations, J Boogie 164, Lisa, how you doing Lisa, how you doing everybody, everybody, greetings, salutations, welcome back to, welcome back to the live stream. Uh, I paused that, well, it is all good. So uh, yeah, essentially this is the first time I've spoken to anybody uh, properly since the break and uh, I trust everybody had a fantastic time and uh, you're all happy and uh, happy and healthy and making sawdust. Uh, so yeah there we go. This is obviously a Q&A. Uh, if you want to guarantee an answer then uh, a super chat is the best way. I will see that and absolutely answer that. If not I will try and trawl through the uh, through the chat and see what happens. And uh, if I spot it, I will, well, I'll answer. Alfred Kane just been watching The Shadows on YouTube. Just great music uh, of a time, but incredible. And uh, yeah, that uh, supremely clean tone uh, that doesn't give you anywhere to hide. Personally, if I'm playing guitar, I need distortion and uh, echo and reverb and uh, uh, maybe a bit cruncher or two to hide what I'm actually doing. <laughs> But anyway, it's all fun and games. Uh, Borgonian Evolution, talking about doing an SG build this year, uh, but uh, with a silver burst, etc. Ooh, Damascus Steel, not in GGBO though this time. Uh, GGBO, that's a very good point. Okay, so uh, that is uh, coming up, coming to an end. And uh, yeah, we're at the stage now where uh, most of the guitars, where are we? We have got 13 days and three hours, basically, until the end of the great guitar uh, build-off uh, competitions to potentially win their guitars. Now, I'm looking here at the great guitar giveaway site, and there are still some issues which are just strange and uh, very weird to do with the images. Uh, but if you come up with that and refresh your page a few times, it should sort out. Uh, I am in the process of uh, trying to find somebody else to uh, to take this over because I've had enough, frankly. Uh, but anyway, it is what it is. It's incredible. Great Guitar Build-Off uh, 2022, it's not this year anymore, uh, was so close to what I'd hoped. Uh, from the point of view of the amount of administration involved and all of that, it's just, it's, it's coming together. I'm very interested to hear what you guys think uh, we should do and if there are any further changes, etc. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, Guitar Addicts Workshop says, anybody else still not finished their 22 entry into Great Guitar Build-Off? Uh, I'm, I'm the only one. Uh, don't I feel foolish? You are not the only one. We've in fact got two uh, two people in the invitational side of things who haven't yet finished and we will be, um, I hope, uh, having those come through and we'll be uh, go through Great Guitar, giveaway, etc, etc. Decaf coffee to trick myself into being awake. But uh, yeah, anyway. Let's see, questions, queries, comments, criticisms. Um, I must say right at the beginning of this that this is probably going to be the last of the regular Sunday evening live streams. I, it is getting colder and colder and as I'm not actually in the workshop all the time, I can't justify keeping it heated all the time. I'm now working from headquarters most of the time. I am going to be doing the Luthiers Question Time maybe even uh, twice a week. Uh, from headquarters so that will it, this will still be happening it just won't be on Sunday evenings at 8 p.m. Um, on top of everything else uh, Sunday evenings is 
as we come into the new year and guitar shows and things happen, uh, it's just impossible to do a Sunday because most of the time I will be driving. So that it, it is what it is. However, uh, yeah, watch the space, click on the notifications and you'll get the notifications when the streams happen. Uh, I'm also hoping to be able to get some of the other people who are at headquarters on mic. So it's not just me monologuing to camera. Uh, although we don't have many questions today. Uh, sporadic music says, sorry I'm late. I hope you had a good Christmas and New Year's Eve, Ben and everybody. Uh, right back at you. And uh, yes, it was intensely relaxing to the point where really don't want to go back to work. And I love my work. Ha! Who's kidding? <laughs> uh, can't wait to get back in the workshop. Uh, or couldn't wait to get back in the workshop. Last week was the first week back. It was a short week, so four days. And uh, by the end of it, it felt like I'd already been back at work for a month. So there we go. Now, uh, give me questions, people. Or, um, or give me... Give me questions or give me death. Give me questions or give me my bed. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. Um, Ape song, great idea for a video, refinishing a relic guitar. So funnily enough, there was one that was supposed to have um, appeared on the channel and unfortunately they started work on it before starting filming. Uh, we had a customer bring in a Gibson Les Paul that he had um, he had both relicked and checked. So the relicking was done by hand, um, not, not very well and the, he didn't like the results, but he had also used the cold technique, putting a guitar in a freezer and bringing it out into a very warm room in order to create a checkering effect in the uh, in the nitro on this this ball and it was perfect like beautiful checkering but but not what he hoped for so we are actually literally in the process of refinishing that um, but uh, that's almost finished so that's not something that will be a video uh, Borgonian Oh, hold on. Barry Christian says, what happened to Driftwood Guitars entry? Have you heard from them? They were horrendously embarrassed that they couldn't do it. But uh, business, um, business for them is absolutely booming and they just could not make uh, the, the date. They are going to finish the guitar and they are going to, uh, uh, yeah, they're going to finish the guitar and we will do a big thing about that uh, when the time comes. Uh, Keen Irvin says, Ben, as an 18 year old American who's thinking about taking the three month guitar course in my gap year next year, how much would you estimate that it would cost with lodging and materials and all? Uh, that's almost impossible to talk about. I mean, it's literally impossible to talk about. Drop Ricky a, a message or uh, through shop at crimsonguitars.com or office at crimsonguitars.com and talk to Ricky about the specifics. It depends entirely on the guitars that you want to build. It depends entirely on what you want to achieve during the course. Uh, and also, we, we don't have accommodation on site. We have a fantastic person called Julie who helps us find accommodation for students uh, and members of staff sometimes as well. But uh, you can come in and say, look, my budget is X and I'm happy to put up with uh, sharing a house with three sweaty crimson builders or whatever uh, or hey I want to spend 200 pounds a week or 300 pounds a week or thousand pounds a week and have a private cottage for me and my family etc so uh, I just physically can't answer your question on average people will spend about four or five hundred pounds per guitar in materials uh, but it can go either way quite easily uh, and the course uh, I'm not even entirely sure what the course costs at the moment uh, but that is currently on the website, uh, crimsonguitars.com. So, uh, yeah, Ricky, Ricky's your man. <sighs> Paul needs. Uh, Paul needs says, Irvana nuts are worth a try. I they do have an effect. They do do what they say. I personally don't think that. I personally don't think it is necessary. I think that. We have, over the last 100 years, trained ourselves to hear, more than that, 200 years, have trained ourselves to hear a guitar in a certain way with all of the dissonances 
and slight out of tuneness that you get with a guitar. And we expect that. And if you go too far towards making a guitar perfectly in tune, unless you are, unless you are Robert Fripp, for example, and you are doing intensely technical, clean, almost piano-like amazingness, uh, then it's not required and you will actually sound more out of tune with the rest of the band than you would otherwise. So yes, a Nirvana nut, great, but um, I think this, I personally think, I personally think that I should shut that door properly. That's one of the reasons it's cold, hold on. Uh, I personally think that uh, striving for perfect tuning stability is just, just a bad idea. Okay. Sporadic of music. I finished off my bag of crow's coffee on Christmas morning with some Baileys. Ooh, I've still got some Baileys left over for Christmas. Very tasty. I need to order another bag now. Thank you very much. Have you managed to get a Fairclough or Harley Benton for a teardown yet? I have got two Fairclough. I've got a Fairclough Les Paul and a Strat. I will sit down and do a video about those. Uh, I, genuinely, I have... I'm a, it's amazing how little time I've had to do anything that I want to do recently. Uh, we're currently planning and preparing for the, uh, the guitar show at the end of February, which is the big one in Birmingham. Uh, it's gonna be amazing. <sighs> Here's an example. So Sophia, who you all know now know well, uh, it feels like I've known her about, for about three seconds, but I met her at this guitar show last year. And uh, within two minutes of meeting her, offered her a job. And uh, here we are. I, 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 we act, she insisted it was the Birmingham show, and I insisted, no, it couldn't have been. It had to have been something later in the year. But no, it was the Birmingham show. That is how fast this last year has gone. Okay, Big Cat's, Big Cat's Guitars, or Steriman, uh, says, I'm making a bass, brake angle, etc. all worked out correctly, but I buggered the top. Uh, that's a hobby that I have also had uh, over, the, over the years. Uh, I've since removed the top, plus a little bit of extra material. Is there a way to reverse engineer the brake angle? Um, interesting. I genuinely... I'm going to assume that you are talking about a, a set neck base or a through neck base, sorry, uh, with, where the neck is already now glued in. If not, it's just a case of putting the... Uh... <sighs> okay, if it's a set neck, then yes, what you're going to have to do is leave the top thick and then push it over the, uh, over the fretboard, etc., as you normally would. Uh, put your ruler on and the bridge and just measure and see what it is and then carve it down to where you are, where you need to be. If it isn't, then it's relatively simple. Um, you're probably going to have to take, you're probably going to have to take a little bit of material off the, the neck itself to fix that angle. But um, yeah, it's a difficult, it's a difficult one. Uh, if I haven't hit that question properly, then please drop me an email, stream at crimsonguitars.com, and we'll see what happens. Okay, uh, here's a question from Garage Master Guitars via Creevera, thanks man, uh, and our Discord channel. Uh, it says, I've just had a request to alter a guitar. They want to get rid of the pickup switch, which is currently down with the volume and tone, and put it on the top, up top like Les Paul. How would you go about drilling for the wires? Um, that's relatively, relatively easy. You remove all of the uh, electronics etc uh, if you are you're obviously going to have to create a new route but uh, every time I pick up this guitar I remember how bloody heavy it is um, the angle of drilling from in this pocket into the the switch cavity uh, is actually not because it's so close you aren't running the risk of drilling uh, through to the back or anything like that. So yeah, I would use a relatively long bit and uh, drill from within the pickup cavity to where the switch is. Uh, if you are worried, then tape down a piece of metal or something so that you do not, you cannot, um, you cannot damage the top. Oh 
Okay. Hmm. Big Unit Guitar says, uh, Bummer Sunday live streams are done. I am sorry about that. Uh, I don't get to catch you often midweek. I do hear you on the cold shop though. It's been super cold here and our garage isn't insulated. Sheesh, haven't been building much. It, it's genuinely an issue. Also, now that it's a bigger space, I put the heater on a, a few hours ago now and it really hasn't touched it. So, uh, yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe in the summer. I will do some more from here, but uh, we're not going to have a regular, regular Sunday re Sunday evening. Shock the Fox. Guitar should be there this week. Have a blast with it. I'm assuming that Ty has just sent me his guitar that won the great guitar build-off, um, which I didn't realize was actually happening. So this is gonna be freaking cool. Uh, there you go, guys, you heard it here first, Shock the Fox. Uh, I'm assuming I'm going to be doing a Luthier's Teardown on the guitar that won the Great Guitar Build of 22. And then we're gonna ship that guitar uh, from here to whoever wins it. Uh, where are we? Um, I'm genuinely looking forward to this. Um, hold on, website, website, website. Professional. Uh, that instrument. There are only 472 tickets remaining on that prize draw. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, it really truly is a fan favorite as well. Uh, the closest instrument in ticket sales uh, is uh, No Huevas Fuertes, I think. No, it is uh, Yang Hyung Lee and Noah Hervas Fuertes, uh, both with 942 and Yang Hyung Lee is 955 tickets remaining. So we have sold far more tickets for Ty's guitar than anything else. Um, it's absolutely incredible. Um, I, uh, yeah. I've got nothing. This is this has been such a good year, and having people like Ty involved uh, has yeah, it, it's just incredible. Um, Walden Guitar Works question today on Pinterest. I saw a hand pull plane thing. I don't know exactly what it's called, and I wondered how useful it would be in guitar building. I don't really know. Uh, this could either be a Japanese uh, a Japanese plane that you 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 pull, uh, which. I don't actually have an example of here. There's probably something in the cabinet behind behind you guys, um, or potentially a box scraper. So it's a Stanley Stanley box scraper. Google it, uh, and that was for taking your uh, screen printed uh, lettering off the side of a wooden box, so that when you uh, in the sort of 1800s, so when you reshipped it, it didn't go to the wrong address. Um, so there we go. Uh, Mr. D20, Ben, give me the confidence to cut my first body from a blank. Should I do the neck pocket first and then cut it to shape, or what's the best for the first timer? Uh, <sighs> okay, firstly, if you are careful, and you are obviously worried about it, therefore will be careful, just think through everything two or three times. The old adage, measure twice, cut once, is, is actually true. Uh, very, very much so. Don't do me. I don't think. I just start filming and <laughs> do stuff. Um, but uh, yeah. Technically, it would be easier, and I've never given this advice before. Technically, it would be easier and safer to do the neck pocket route into a rectangular body blank before you then cut the neck shape. It, it actually would. You have more support for the neck pockets template. Um, you've got uh, a more, more idea of where this, the center line is, etc. And I, I think actually, yeah, for the first time, I would do it that way. Uh, I'm furiously trying to remember how I did it. I don't think my, my first 10 or 20 guitars were actually through necks because I found that much less scary than uh, uh, than the thought of making an accurate neck pocket template because I really sucked at that. 
like truly it was was terrible um yeah um Krivarai, uh Creeverai is considering buying a record power BS350, but on the other hand, it'll take up 20% of my shop's floor, of his shop's floor, floor space, and he might end up killing himself lifting the 100 kilogram machine into the basement. Uh, I've, yeah, I've done that. Um, I actually have recently, uh, two or three months ago, put my back out, and it's still not right. Make friends and get them to help you move it in. Um, the reality is that PS350, basically you cannot go wrong with a record power PS350, as long as you don't drop it down the stairs. Uh, if you are building guitars, then that's around about the size you need. I think you might get away with a 250, but a 350 is meaty enough to do anything that you can ever throw at it, anything that you would ever need to do with guitar building, ripping down, uh, a book matching, a supremely chunky wenge or something like that, which should be done with ease with the right blade in there. Uh, they are, I'm not paid by them, uh, we have had trade discounts with them in the past and, and sometimes even better than trade discounts, but you know, I'm not a sponsor, sponsee or, or anything like that. I'm just a huge fan of uh, the quality of their work. So yeah, seriously, dude, um, I would suggest that that's the bandsaw for you, uh, essentially because no matter what you do, you're not going to need to replace it. Um, if you are sure that you're going to use, use it and keep on building uh, guitars then that's the that's the instrument that's the tool for you okay david already says cheer up ben by the way you missed my oh my god i missed your super chat so sorry uh i am cheery i'm just cold <laughs> sorry uh david Oddie, thank you so much for my win in the ggg do you do realize that that sounds like i gave you the win rather than created the competition i actually have hold on he says thank you so much for my win in the ggg if i can win anyone can um, I, we had somebody, uh, shouting at us in the comments on a, a recent video saying, well, if a, somebody on YouTube could win it, I, th I thought this was all, you know, squiffy or whatever, but, uh, you know, he says, oh, what, the, what are the odds? Thousands and one, the odds on the great guitar giveaway at the moment, um, are generally one or 200 people buy tickets per guitar for most guitars. Sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's a lot less. And the odds are really, really good. Um, and the odds, especially as I explained, uh, or as my mother explained to this person uh, in the comments, the odds of um, somebody who watches the channel, who's a fan, whose name I remember, um, uh, are very, very high because you guys are the people who are currently buying tickets. You guys are the ones who, uh, who are watching every video and supporting us. So David, I need to flip the script on you and say thank you very much for competing and uh, I assume you've got the guitar. Uh, I sincerely hope you've got the guitar and I really hope that you love that instrument. It was, um, so David Oddy won the um, uh, Gibson ES335 Riviera, the Epiphone Riviera, that was it, um, model uh, into which we had retrofitted three Gibson P90s and uh, it had already had an upgrade of the tuners and an upgrade of uh, various electronics and bits and pieces. And uh, yeah, it's just, it was really, really cool guitar. And I'm glad that it's gone to somebody who uh, so obviously appreciates it. Um, so there we go. Uh, another super chat from Sporelica Music. Thanks very much. Um, question is, how is the museum coming along? Any date in mind as to when you want it up and running? I'm keen to come along and take a look. I wanted up and running two weeks ago. Uh, that is, or two years, 10 years ago. It's absolute, absolute chaos. Uh, I spent a full day last week. Uh, okay, a lot of you will, will know the general layout of, of Crimson. So I'll, I'll walk you through what the plans are as they, as they are. Uh, my long-term goal is to have it housed somewhere outside of Crimson, but uh, until it is, is making 
money until it has its own source of funding and is self-sufficient. I, I can't afford to do that. Uh, hell, I can't even afford to do the museum, which is why the giveaways uh, a thing. Um, even so. <sighs> okay, so you've got... <sighs> That's a bit. So you walk up the stairs and you've got a, a great big room that for the longest time on the channel used to be the office that was where uh, Tom and James and, every, and the editors and everybody was in there. And next door to that is my old studio. Now, where was the, the room that was the office has since been turned into the vintage tool shop. We are essentially axing the vintage tool shop and it's, at headquarters, it's just not getting enough people visiting it um, to buy tools. So we're putting all of the tools, we're making it an online only place. All of the tools are going into my old studio, along with all of the crimson stock and the packing and shipping and all of that, nicely organized on shelves. And uh, we've, we've been planning that and figuring that out. And there's a big old mezzanine uh, on the same level and a little kitchen. And uh, the plan is we're going to take that big room and uh, build, as you walk in, there's going to be a, a big old curved wall uh, walking around and you'll see uh, eight or ten guitars, uh, celebrity, celebrity inspired guitars. So we'll have a, a replica of, I hope, on the channel, I hope to build uh, a Martin D18E like um, out of a, a Martin, uh, like uh, Kurt used on the um, uh, the open mic, uh, the acoustic session thing, for example. So it's an impossible guitar to get the, an original, but we could, as an interesting thing, build one, have it on the wall, have photographs of him using a similar thing, document the process. Hell, we could write it. Shit, we could actually write a whole book about recreating that guitar. That would be quite, quite fun. Um, so you walk in there, you see that, and then you walk around a corner into a completely different room that we've created. There will be an acoustic room. Uh, I've already got two guitars from the early 1800s, uh, both of which need restoring and will be restored on the channel. Then you walk around from there into the main room, which is going to be done almost like a 1960s... Um, almost like a 1960s... Recording studio, that's the sort of vibe I'm going for. So, you know, we want Persian carpets on the floors, but it also needs to sort of look like Clockwork Orange. That kind of a vibe. And then finally, uh, we're building, an, uh, there's an, another small room off to the side that is going to be uh, called The Lounge. And it's literally going to be a 60s or 70s living room where we'll say, hey, do you want to go and play this guitar? Um, here you go, go take it into the lounge, sit in the, sit in the chair, put some headphones in. We'll be going through a Kemper, of course. Maybe we'll build a Kemper into a, a vintage uh, radio uh, and uh, yeah, and have a listen and, and uh, see what happens. And, um, and that will have a few guitars around. And that's, that's stage one. Uh, I haven't considered, we're gonna have to have some sort of a shop as well. I don't know, but uh, we, we've been planning that and uh, figuring out hell just the uh, just the cost of actually building the rooms uh, is is significant let alone actually filling them with guitars so it is something i am actively working on uh, you will start to see photographs you'll start to see videos of it uh, coming through but um, yeah it's a long-term project the main issue is just getting the eight guitars or maybe ten guitars just in that entrance hallway if we were to buy custom shop versions of a Harrison Telly and uh, a version of Blackie and Greeny, for example, things things like that, I, yeah, just that room's a million quid. We we can't afford that. We're gonna have to beg, borrow, and steal and replicate, and that takes time. So it's gonna be fun to visit. It's gonna be open to visit, but it's gonna be. Uh, limited for some time. It's going to take quite some time to grow to a point where, uh, well, to what I want it to be. Phase two, phase two uh, will be, we take on the rest of the building. There's a corner of the building we don't have. Move the shops, the vintage tool shop, the 
crimson shop and the packing and all of that move that to the other end of the building and my old studio where I filmed all the crimson stuff will become part of the museum and then phase three is we move we take over the whole mezzanine area uh, which is now the vintage tool auction house and uh, clear that and then that becomes another part of the museum uh, there's a stairway as well and an office at the bottom the office will be the shop and maybe where you get some coffee and stuff it's a relatively small room but you know there'll be a coffee machine and, and bits and pieces and at that point and then as well at the same time we're also talking about um, We are also talking about, uh, as another way to try and fund this behemoth that uh, seems to have become my obsession, uh, setting up an actual proper, just standard guitar shop. Uh, where, uh, because, because why not? We've got the room, we've got the expertise, we might as well sell guitars. So I'm, I'm looking into uh, sort of becoming a main dealer of, or a dealer at least of, of various brands. Uh, Fender etc uh, at least could have put some feelers out but also there will be guitars where we just say hey you know we've got these things that are on the store uh, if you want to buy one go for it if you want to enter into the, the giveaways etc please do so there's there's a hell of a lot happening uh, and the whole time around there's about 14 other projects to do so <laughs> there we go sporadic and music that was one hell of a question uh, took me nearly 10 minutes to answer that. I apologise to everybody else who didn't really want to hear. Uh, big Unit Guitars. Uh, ben, thanks for the compliment on my electronics video. Did you find it helpful and educational? I absolutely did. Um, and, you know, it's a, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much for putting it up. Um, uh, for, uh, it's about an hour and 10 minutes long, I recall. And uh, uh, it's very hard for me to carve out an hour and 10 minutes to watch a video. I had you on... Uh, 1.75 times speed for, for much of it and then rewound a few parts. Uh, explaining uh, ground loop was particularly elucidating to me. Uh, that was that was incredible. Uh, the way you explained how a, uh, how a potentiometer actually works etc was also very very cool and uh, yeah the, the whole thing was was awesome. So thank you very very much for doing that. Uh, Vulcan Essen, Happy New Year, Ben and Community. Which colour code do the classic hookers follow? Cheers, V. They really should have a piece of paper in them. I just, yeah. Um, it follows the Seymour Duncan. Uh, yeah, it's the same as Seymour Duncan. So essentially you can use any of the wiring diagrams on their site and uh, it works fine. Uh, Ivan Wizard, Carl says, uh, where's the book, Ben? Um, also, pronounce dubtail, dubtail, I don't know. If you get it wrong, your Irish is bad, my Irish is bad, or non-existent. Uh, and you have to follow dubtail woodcraft on Insta, shameless self-promotion, will Crimson Beard make a central? Okay, multiple, I don't, f I f <laughs> even if I follow you on Instagram, it doesn't mean I'm going to see anything. Um, I am diabolically bad, especially this last two or three weeks, uh, and I haven't spent very much time on anything uh, related to social media, so I haven't followed you yet. Um, where is the book? Uh, the book, I have about three in progress. Uh, I also still need to get my ADHD meds, which I'm hoping will be the silver bullet that fixes that particular problem. And will Crimson be at Maker Central? Crimson will one, actually very good point. I'm assuming Crimson will be at Maker Central. I know for sure I am. Whether we're taking Crimson or not, I actually don't know. Probably. Yeah, we'll be there. Um, okay, and I need to I need to follow you on Instagram. So, where's that message? Where's that message? Your Irish is bad. My gosh, I have zero Irish. Okay. <laughs> Rob Tootle talking about sloppy pockets. Uh, sloppy pockets are less critical with a bolt on them with a set neck. Absolutely. Well, um, 
To a certain extent, yes, because you can adjust them. Uh, if you're careful with the gluing, an epoch that isn't great could still glue up okay. But it is very, it is very, yeah, don't mess that up. Absolutely. Okay. Paul needs stairs. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, this is the thing. My my dream goal, my dream is to have a giant old brick building with a, a museum, multi levels of a lift, uh, room for a workshop. Uh, uh, so a whole floor would be my workshops and the Crimson Guitars workshops where we, you we do custom builds and things and people can walk through the tour. Then above that is the guitar building school uh, where maybe people who visit the workshop can go and do a tour and stare through the glass windows at students beavering away making guitars. Uh, a floor of a guitar shop uh, in there as well so you can go and you know play an experience. But uh, with the whole thing being pulled together by... Uh, a museum. That that's what I want. I mean, genu genuinely, what I've built at Crimson is nothing in comparison to what I dream of for this museum. And it's so weird because Crimson has been the be all end all focus of my life up to now. Um, yeah, weird one. Ah, talking about bandsaws, Zef Neeson says, I've got an older version of the uh, record BS350, the blue one, and it's fantastic. I book match tops on it at full depth cut and it handles it no problems at all. The new ones are better. Uh, I absolutely agree. Um, Bubbly Juice, hi Ben, what's the score or plan with these streams going out as podcasts? I haven't seen them on Spotify for quite some time. Um, that is entirely on me. I really need to reorganize that uh, or, or, or nix it. Um, uh, Ivan Wizard Carl says, I have a BS250, you're not resawing with it, I need to upgrade. Okay, so yeah, the BS350 is the one to go for. Um, Graham B, have you sorted out the currency situation on the Great Guitar Giveaway? Unfortunately, all the guitars I wanted to get a ticket for have gone, but still would like to take part. Uh, <coughs> it is, uh, the last thing that I saw on Friday actually was, as I was leaving, Tom said, oh my god, we've had the email from... Uh, the people who are providing that, so it should be, it should now be something that we, uh, it's imminent, it's totally imminent. If you use Cash App, you should be able to, uh, you should be able to do it without bothering to change the currency, uh, apparently. But uh, yeah, that's one of those things. Okay, Billy says, hey there, I was wondering if there's a specific reason why the neck pocket should be made very precise. Okay, so first of all, you've got the, the traditional answer is that with a nice tight neck pocket, you have better tonal transfer of the vibrations from the strings to the guitar, etc. Frankly, if the neck is bolted in nice and tightly, then you're not losing anything or much uh, or anything. Um, it's debatable. Uh, through not having a particularly great neck pocket the rest of the way. Uh, however, however, the issue then becomes one of alignment. And so, for example, uh, a video that went live on the channel the other day was uh, uh, me looking at the Fender Her guitar that is on the giveaway at the moment. Uh, I had to go and do something else and uh, gave the guitar to Josh to put back together. It had a terrible neck pocket. Uh, you could literally pull the neck out. It was that bad. Um, and uh, when Josh put it back together again, he tightened it without then double checking the alignment of the strings and the bass string is a little bit closer to the edge of the fretboard than it should be. So we're gonna have to loosen it, push it sideways, tighten it up again, and it'll be sorted and it'll sound fine. And, you know, it's good. But that alignment is the other issue that you've got. So yeah, you need to be... Uh, you need to be careful. <sighs> Jason Davis 2000 says, I've got a Les Paul type guitar kit for Christmas. It has a flamed maple top, but the veneer is very thin. There are some rough patches. I need tips on wood filler before sanding that will still show the flame. 
Uh, I think that you're talking about sanding sealer. Get yourself some sanding sealer from any timber store, etc., and uh, you should be okay. Four three five one WPI says Ben. I traded my Made in Mexico Strat for a Made in Mexico Special Edition Strat. Uh, on the SE had fret sprout, it was more like tang sprout. I was able to shave the tangs down, but how can I fix the high gloss finish? Uh, MFB. What does MFB stand for? Okay. Uh, you should have a fairly thick finish on there, so it, it's literally just a case of uh, going in with. Uh, 800 grit, 1200 grit, 1500 grit, 2000, 2500, and then some polishing compound, even tea cut or something like that that you can buy at your, your local sort of uh, uh, car parts mega store, wherever you are in the world, uh, will do. But any, any program, any video on getting a high gloss paint finish will give you a tutorial on how to do that. Do it wet, uh, wet and dry paper works best wet, uh, unless you absolutely can't use water on whatever you're doing, but I would uh, I would go from there. Um, Carol would have sent a four pound super chat with a, an emoji just throwing a cup, uh, a coffee cup at me. Um, cheers, Carol. Okay. Looking for questions, queries, and comments. Rob Tootle, how do you rate compact dust collectors or VACs? I've just ordered an Evolution R15 VAC to install on my new workbench, so I have a VAC at hand with power takeoff. I, Yes, I have multiple small ones around the place. In a small workshop, I think they're great. Um, and yeah, actually having a, a, a an extractor built into the workbench really appeals to me. I, don't, I haven't got personal experience with that one, but if it works, go for it. Okay. Now, but um, but dum, bum, dum. Ah, the Novello Pew. Hi Ben. Of all the production guitars you've handled recently for the Luthier Teardown series, which has impressed you the most? Oh, I've actually got a website up. To the thing that's coming to mind first is the. Um, Silver Sky SE that just really, really did it. Uh, I've, we've got a 2014 Fender Telecaster that we all love. I'm horrendously disappointed by the PRS S2 standard. You will see a video on that soon. Uh, the quality control on the American made budget S2 standard versus the quality control on the uh, SE is mind blowingly. It's just different. <sighs> yeah. Okay. I'm going to have to say... I have to say um, it's a cross between that Phanosonic Sphere, which I absolutely loved, and uh, the SE Silver Sky. Which I actually kind of want to get one for myself. Yeah, I think that's the plan. Okay. Jboogie164, regarding GGBO23, can I enter a guitar that I've already started building or does it have to be documented from the start? It really does need to be documented from the start. Um, it, yeah, it's... <laughs> It's just the way. Um, Robert R. Ben, any idea when you will be finishing the hand tool build, new build or building your new workbench? I'm probably not going to bother building a new workbench at this point uh, since I'm not actually working in this workshop very much. But the hand tool only build is sitting there. I really need to carve out a day to get it under finish. I have, um, I have cut the the purfling, the decorative designs into 95% of the body. I've got to do the headstock on camera, but uh, the rest of that has been done. So there has been progress. And at this stage, I now need to fill it and, and uh, fill the cracks, fill the, the cuts 
uh, with some dark uh, dark wood and glue and bits and pieces and, and you know, put on some oil. I'm going to do a guitar f um, shellac and guitar finishing oil, I think, is, is the current plan. Uh, so that should be soon. Should be soon. Now... Yeah, I need questions. Douglas Sapolo, could you drop us an email? Office at uh, uh, greatguitarbuildoff.com. And uh, that's really interesting because, uh, yeah, he's saying, uh, my latest attempt to pay for the order has failed again. All of the non-GGBO guitars have been won by others, but it is odd that I can't make it work. Genuinely, we have about, uh, about 100 orders a day. Uh, coming through of, of people succeeding in buying tickets so um, let me just quickly check yeah, there was an order 28 minutes ago one 29 minutes ago uh, and uh, essentially we should be able to look specifically at your orders that have failed and uh, see what is happening uh, but as I said the as I said, uh, the new payment platforms, we've got two new payment platforms coming on stream. One we've used in the past and we know it works. Another one which is also going to be live as a, uh, as a backup. So uh, there we go. Uh, Paul Needs says, which pore filler for ash? Mahogany? Uh, I would, well, it depends on what you want. If you fill it with mahogany, then it's going to be darker by far than the ash. Uh, I would go for a maple fill, to be honest, uh, or just an ash uh, fill. Um, if I was, I would make it myself. Yeah, basically you want, it depends on what you're after. That's it. If you want to accentuate the grain, then yes, mahogany would do very, very nicely. And it would make that grain pop. If you want to try and hide the grain filler, then you want a maple or something like that. Alrighty. Oh, Clearfill. Ian e e M says Clearfill. That's a very good point. I keep on forgetting that that even exists. Uh, Douglas Sapoda says I have sent an email from the link on the website. Okay, I will. I will uh, double check that that has been dealt with. Um, <laughs> the chat kept on moving. A day. Let me double check myself. Um, I might be, I might be wrong. Analytics. Remember, we do have GGBO on there at the moment, uh, which is making a big difference. Uh, okay, so no, I, I lied. Uh, there was a day where we had 100 orders. Uh, it goes between 50 to... Uh, 50 to 70 orders on average, I suppose. Most of them are close to the 40, 50, etc. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, the, the website, in spite of its problems, is doing, um, is doing quite well. Great Guitar Build Off. Uh, I had a look yesterday, and because part of it was for charity, the Invitational Builders, um, a portion of the money raised from their bills is going to charities of their choices. We've raised, if I recall, about seven, maybe eight thousand pounds for charity through the in, just the Invitational part of Great Guitar Build Off uh, 22, which is incredible. I'm going to Carl Price can't see images on the on the I I'm just yeah. So essentially with regards to the images, I'm in the middle of sorting out Cloudflare. But on the website, I'm just gonna clear the cache and see what that does. And run that. There we go. Okay. Uh yeah. I've never had I've never had a website come up with the problems that we've got with this website. 
and it's just a standard WordPress site. You shouldn't have issues with images not loading. It's, it's bullshit, to be frank. Um, <laughs> Luthier Taylor says, hey, man, much love from the other end of the Luthery spectrum and the other end of the Commonwealth. Um, uh, and that's uh, a violin maker. Uh, greetings. Uh, nothing but respect and envy. You can build uh, violins in a, in a much quieter and more sedate and uh, pleasant environment than most electric guitar workshops tend to be with all the routers and dust and insanity. Um, <laughs> it's all fun. Uh, Bill Stoltz, Ben, what do you think of the PB guitars and basses? I did enjoy the uh, PBT60. We've had two of them now. They're incredible instruments. Heavy, but incredible, very well made. I haven't yet got my hands on a modern one. Uh, and I am broadening out so that the teardowns now are going to be uh, moving forward. I've picked up an ESP recently. I've got a couple of new Dan Electros. Um, actually, those are still, I mean, they're in boxes to be opened at headquarters. Um, I'm very much looking forward to doing a proper teardown of the Gretsch, uh, uh, the Streamliner. I think I need to own a Streamliner for myself as well, actually. That guitar seemed far, far better than uh, it has right to be at that price point. So I'm genuinely, you know, people are going to ask at some point, why are you doing live, um, the um, teardowns and, and not building guitars? And at the moment, I am pulling together so much information and knowledge about guitars that I'm, I didn't realize I didn't know through doing this. And it's incredible. And uh, we're going to start as a company building some very interesting things as a result as well. So, yeah. All fun and games, all fun and games. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, have a look at the uh, Great Guitar giveaway website now and see if that's made any difference. No, not really. If you clear your cache, it's just very, very annoying. Anyway. We'll get there. Oh, Douglas Sapoda says, what about G&L guitars? If memory serves me correctly, isn't that where Leo Fender ended up? It is uh, uh, George and Leo, George Fullerton, I think, uh, and Leo Fender. Uh, I never, I have never really liked some of the design choices that he made in order to take himself away from uh, his first company. But uh, I have also always heard good things about the quality. So, so yes, I will uh, I'll do that. Uh, Ian M says, so then with all this newfound info, what does the next Ben build look like? It's probably, well, <laughs> actually, so I'm currently in the process of doing the uh, the Cowrie Acoustasonic style Jazzmaster thing. I have also got to build a guitar out of the, uh, the bog oak table that we made. And I've also got a commission for a Cowrie 335 style, 335 slash... Um, Hofner um, Verithin style builds. So those will all be coming along and will be filmed. Uh, Sophia is also currently a, um, yeah, she's currently taking one of our old kits and turning it into an amazing Telecaster as well. So that will be on the channel soon. We've also got a, a Copper Rodder guitar coming through. So yeah, bits and pieces, there's this stuff happening. But uh, the next build that I have absolute choice and can build whatever the hell I want, I have no idea. I have no idea. Probably very, very vintage inspired. Uh, almost certainly. <sighs> Robert R. Apparently still not getting orders. This has been an issue with the postage, I assume, and I'm going to assume that you have... Uh, so he's got part of the order, but is still missing an unfinished kit. Uh, everything we'd ship at the moment is now tracked. We should know exactly where it is, um, but uh, I have no ability here to help with that. Uh, I'm going to assume you're in touch with uh, Ricky in that regard. Uh, as far as I'm aware, Crimson are 
very, very on the ball now with orders. Uh, there are a few small things out of stock here and there. Um, the world is still insane, but um, yeah, we, we, we're, we're doing very, very well uh, with regards to that point. Paul Cook, uh, have you correlated which outsourced factories are building the better teardowns? Brands aren't always open with Joe Public about who builds what. I'm still learning that myself, but uh, but yes, uh, I think I heard that Court, well, this, the factory that builds Court is also where the SEs are made. And yeah, the SEs are very, very good guitars. Uh, anonymous Botch, maybe an electric lute. I, I like that idea. I do like that idea. I'm also uh, particularly interested in making a guitar lele kind of thing. So essentially an electric guitar lele. It'll be a, a sort of a ukulele style or ukulele sound, but guitar tuning and number of strings. Uh, that tickles me. Um, yeah. <sighs> ben, do a scratch offset triple humbucker. Um, I've never built a triple humbucker build. Ha! Um, Redhead17 going to get a music man, a way to get their headstock in there without getting sued. I've seen... <sighs> Yeah, I, I saw another builder the other day with a, a four and two headstock and apparently it's now fair game. So yes, uh, I am emphatically getting a music, ma a, a music man, music master, uh, a music man for the museum. I, I desperately want, I've got the Ernie Ball Eagle tattoo on here. And the first time I saw it was in a book on a, on a silhouette that was painted blue and had the black eagle underneath a clear plexi scratch plate. I want that guitar. I have wanted that guitar since I was 17 or 18. Um, and uh, yeah, I want it. I have got no self-control. Uh, Rob Tootle, I know they're talking amongst themselves. Uh, car prices, whatever you did made it so one in five or six picks showed. If you clear your cash, it really should work. Um, I've... Hold on. Uh, there's another... Da, 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 da. Let me try something. No, wrong thing. Um, no, it's running. <laughs> Backends of websites are just a nightmare. But what can you do? Eh? Let's see if that does anything. So when you're logged in, the images all work, or at least for me, after a while. When you're not logged in or coming in from a, uh, uh, from a strange website, if, so from a, um, an incognito website or something like that, you're using a, what's that thing that I've never been sponsored by? A VPN. Um, it seems to be problematic. Anyway. Love to see an old Japanese uh, uh, Tokia in the collection. I, I want a whole room of Japanese guitars. Look, so as it currently stands, I've allowed myself to go off the rails. I, we're, we're gonna be building a, a bunch of guitars and buying guitars that are sort of celebrity adjacent, or for example, buying a guitar that could be modified into something that looks like something that um, Kurt Cobain would use or, or, or whatever. Um, that music master, um, his uh, Jagstang. Fender don't sell the Jagstang in the cutter he used, or was it a... Um, anyway, they just, they just don't. So uh, we'll buy a Fender and then paint it properly and get the right stickers on and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so that's one thing. The other thing is I would love to have a Telecaster room. You know, you can't beat a Telecaster. Let's just have 50 different versions of the Telecasters. Um, 
I want to have a, a lawsuit room uh, from all those Japanese guitars that uh, were the, the focus of the Gibson lawsuit. I think that would be absolutely amazing and really interesting from a... <clears throat> this isn't just from the point of view of, um, hey, it would be cool to have. These are things that we will have a guitar builder come and visit from the other side of the world and they'll sit there and they'll experience a few hundred guitars that are genuinely interesting. Um, this is why this happened. This is why this happened. This was a lawsuit. This is the, uh, this is a, 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 a vintage Watkins or whatever. It's all about learning. It's all about uh, documenting these things. And, uh, and it's also about gaining access to a shit ton of really cool guitars. So there we go. Jim Bob, Jim Bob says, would love to see you build your version of a three pickup Les Paul Artisan. Oh my God. So the Artisan, uh, everything's wired through the, the, the pickups. It doesn't have uh, back plates, etc. So it's got beautiful, uh, I think they've all got beautiful flame maple backs. And that's probably a sweeping statement. But yeah, I would love to do that. I would genuinely love to do that. Um, yeah, there we go. Uh, Lisa Harshberger says, I had gotten tickets for Paul Waldron's guitars. Says it was refunded and never got the refund. Any ideas? Uh, I'd just get new tickets instead. That's a very good question. Um, he pulled He pulled out, which is fine. But, um, yeah, as far as I was aware, that was all sorted. So, uh, yes, Lisa, if you could drop an email to office at crimsonguitars.com. In the meantime, we're absolutely, uh, the easy way is for us to give you a coupon. But if you have not had your refund, then uh, some other people have not either, I assume. So it might be a wider issue. Again, we've had some issues. <laughs> we've had some issues with um, payment providers, obviously. SC Guitars, hey man, uh, says, uh, when you get a lawsuit about the lawsuit room, uh, you jest. Something else that I'm genuinely so, so tempted by. There's a, there's a, a gallery uh, in Bridport near us, and uh, I haven't visited yet, but I've heard a number of people say, you walk up and he's got a giant sign saying, uh, there are like a billion pounds worth of fakes in this building. And he's essentially got a load of fake artist paintings, artists, sort of ma old masters paintings and things like that. I really do think that it would be cool and also very morally questionable to build a collection of Chipsons and essentially the, the fake guitars that come out of China I love the idea of having the room. I love the idea of looking at them and taking the piss out of them and, and all of that. I, I do. I also hate the idea of going out and actually buying these things and supporting that industry. But, oh, so tempting. And that, I suppose, Gibson, etc., could pros possibly could sue me over through owning it. How would they do it? I mean, if I, if I bought them and then... It, stamped in the back fake or something of each of them i don't know what do you guys think what do you guys think um anonymous botch <laughs> lawsuit room gonna need some rickenbacker bases in there uh, this is this is the thing this there's, there's a bunch of lawsuits we, we we would need the single cut prs absolutely um I mean, hell, Crimson's had three or four different cease and desist, etc. It, it, it just, this sort of stuff happens, happens a lot. Um, uh, big unit. Big units also had an order that hasn't received. Um, uh, so yeah, big unit, drop an email, shop at crimsonguitars.com. Uh, in the subject saying Ben told me to get in touch. Not that that should make any difference whatsoever, but uh, essentially everything is tracked. All th This is an order you placed in October. It has shipped. We will ship out a replacement. It's obviously lost in the post. Uh, we've had multiple issues with couriers and uh, more recently in the UK, actual postal strikes and things. So uh, it's not been fun. But uh, since October, 
a hell. I mean, yeah, somebody's walked off with that. We'll have to uh, send you more, which we will. Um, yeah. I hate seeing messages like that. <sighs> Garage Master, I'm not entirely sure we are waiting for something, but I will check that on the morrow. Ian M, sue you for owning a fake. I can't see how that would work. Um, I think because I'm going to be documenting them, they could p potentially get me for promoting fake guitars, maybe. Although every video I do would be saying, hey, don't buy these things, they, they suck. But mm, it is what <laughs> it's one of those things. Uh, Ivan Wizard Carl says, don't waste your money, Ben. Ha ha. It could be, it could be fun. It could be something to visit, which is the whole point, you know. That That is, I mean, not the whole point, it's part of the point. Uh, Walden Guitar Works says, I've been to a fake art museum like that in the Netherlands. Uh, they also had some real ones until the artist that made a lot of the fakes came by and pointed a few out that he had made that were marked as real. Oh my God. <laughs> We've had that, I had a, somebody, um, one luthier removed when I was studying violin making, or via, uh, Baroque instruments at least, um, made particularly good replicas and uh, he went to Sotheby's, he saw one of his violins for sale in Sotheby's as an old master, Guarneri I think it was, and he had to go to Sotheby's and say, look, no, if you uh, um, if you go in and look here inside, etc., I've marked my name and it's one, I made this thing. And uh, they wanted, I don't know, 150 grand or 200 grand or something like that. This was 30, 20, 20 years ago, uh, 25 years ago, sheesh, I'm old. Um, but uh, it happens. It really does. Mm. <laughs> Will Roberts has just sent through a very cute uh, Japanese Shiba Itsu puppy. Uh, dude, that's cool. Uh, and thank you. Um... Lisa Harshberger has says, has, has anybody seen the stained glass custom Strat Fender made for her for the Beauty and the Beast celebration? I want that. Uh, stained glass one. I haven't seen that. I heard that they made her a plexiglass one. But um, <laughs> Life Banners Dave says, my delayed order you chased on the stream last time arrived soon after. Thank you. Uh, gearing up for the first scratch build in 23. Uh, J Boogie says, I think the only way you can get in trouble with chips is if you try to sell or do sell it as the real deal and get caught, which we know you wouldn't do, hell no. Um, I have one that I bought at this recent guitar show and my, my plan was to uh, inlay a red stripe across the Gibson logo, inlay it, not just paint it on, so that it could never be sold again. But um, for the point of view of a museum, we would probably stamp it into the back, like a physical, you know, a number punch kind of thing, fake. Um, but uh, it's interesting. I, I'm, there's so many cool things that we could do. And I'm, we've got the cross between, this is the education side of things, and this is the, um, but in order to do the educational stuff, we need to raise money, hence great guitar giveaway. Uh, and also we need to have it so that normal people want to see, not just luthiers. So yeah, having a room full of fake guitars, uh, that's something that, hell, I'd be interested in seeing that. So I think basically I've made the decision that I think we're going to do that. <sighs> yeah, why not? Okay. Boom. <laughs> David Oddy. Can you see it in my eyes, David? Can, can you? David Oddy says, Ben, might sound like a stupid question, but are you taking on too much? Literally for the last 20 minutes, uh, all that's going through my mind as I'm answering these questions and talking about uh, the museum and the da, 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 and all of this in the videos, the back of my mind is, is going, you're taking on too much, you're taking on too much, you're doing too much. What the hell, how are you gonna do this? You're just doing, you're just doing too much, just stop. Um, I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can. Something's going to give. I think, I, you know, I might make less videos, for example, or um, 
I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. AC guitars, how about a burn it room? Everything is on fire. I think we'll struggle with the insurance on that one. Um, but, uh, <sighs> we do have one of my earlier, um, I've still got, not early, I've got one, I've still got one of the Shusugi Ban Descendants actually, which is available. Ooh, Luke Penn. Hi Ben, what's your dream guitar? Genuinely, my answer now is probably different to what it would have been six months ago. Um, I think it would probably be sort of a 52 Blackguard Tele. I, I think genuinely would be absolutely amazing. Uh, I have, for the longest time I didn't like Telecasters and then I realized that they were great. And in the last sort of six months to a year, I have fallen and fallen hard. Six months ago, I would have said 59 is Paul. And yeah, I've played a few, and they're incredible, but yeah, you just, just can't beat a Telecaster. So probably, probably that. Um, Mike Vickery saying, hi Ben, why don't you ask Gibson? This is, this is, and I'm going to assume that you're talking about uh, Gibson if they're interested in getting involved. I, I am going to start once the room is built and once or the rooms are built and once we've started putting things in and we've started building a, a, the, the following and it's getting bigger then yes I am going to talk to uh, the brands I am going to talk to collectors we are going to ask people to to lend guitars to the collection we are going to uh, build a community of people. Uh, you know, I can't physically own every guitar in 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 the collection. Um, uh, you know, it's it would bankrupt me to build a museum properly, uh, even if the giveaway did ten times more than it's currently doing. Um, what we've really got, yeah, yeah, it's going to be massive. It's going to be massive and it's going to be so cool to see. Um, so there we go. Luther Taylor says, I keep zoning out to ogle your planes. That's, that's the point. As I get boring, um, what have we got? So this is probably the nicest. I traded a Stanley number one for this and I got the better part of the deal. Um, this is a, um, uh, where are we? This is a gorgeous, uh, Bill Carter, handmade in London, bronze with um, Cupid's bow. Can you see those? There you go, you can sort of see them. Cupid's bow, uh, dovetails in there. Um, absolutely mind-blowingly nice plane. And uh, various vintage bits and pieces. This is another, you can see the Cupid's bow detail there on the top of this as well. Little chariot plane. But uh, yeah, these are the uh, these are the users. There's uh, there's uh, there's a hell of a don't know what that was. There you go, mixing pot. There's a hell of a lot more planes uh, in the background if you're interested. Uh, hold on, let's see. Is that actually camera three? Just for fun. I've been collecting tools for a hell of a long time. And uh, let's, let's see, is this working? This is working. Okay, cool. Focus, please. Uh, so yeah, there's some lovely violin makers planes there. Uh, I suppose, hold on, let me do this. Sorry guys, we're going off the deep end. There's a load of those. I need to make uh, new blades for them. There's a lot of tiny, I collect small planes. 
I absolutely love them. That's a Stanley um, number nine mitre plane, which is incredibly rare and beautiful. Um, this is Stanley 101 and a half, incredibly rare and beautiful. Well, of course I got two. Um, funnily enough, this, which was destroyed, it was very, very, very over restored. This is a, uh, a Leonard Bailey block plane. Um, the baby that then was bought out by Stanley. So that's cool. Oh, all sorts of stuff. Uh, BC Woodworks made me a nice skull. So there's, uh, there's all sorts of stuff. This is a, a couple of Wingfield Rowbottoms. These, the company closed in 1898. Um, then, then there's more up, there's more up top. Well, there's, there's all sorts, sorry if I'm making you guys ill. I just, I, I, I like surrounding myself with beautiful things wherever possible. Um, so we're talking about violin makers planes. This is another little Bill Carter made out of flamed pear wood, I think, is that one. This is a violin makers plane that's also a whale. You can see his mouth up there. Useless as a plane, giant mouth, but very cool. And then these are two two violin makers planes and uh, I, I'm starting th to think that they are Norris. Where is that actually? Yeah, you can see what I'm talking about. So that's there. Anyway, sorry, that is a complete, and this is one of my favorite things of all time. An incredibly roughly carved fish. And I think this is a few hundred years old and I just, I just love it. So, yeah. Anyway, stuff, stuff and nonsense. Sorry for that. Um, where am I? Oh, no. So camera two, that's camera two. I now don't have a camera pointed at me. Uh, that was the wrong one. Hold on, I'll leave that. I've moved this. Okay, there we go. And yeah, camera two. There we go, audio's still on. <sighs> Hi, we're back. Um, SC Guitars, my donation to get some mockingbirds in the museum. Ah, yeah, now you're talking. Now you're talking. Uh, Luthier Taylor says, my prized possession is a two millimeter wide, two millimeter wide thumb plane that I basically use for making purfling and making myself giggle. I, I absolutely agree with you that that sounds just phenomenal. Um, the side view of the 101 and a half reminds uh, Creever Eye of a Whale. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> Luke Penn. What's that a plane for? Ants? <laughs> uh, life balance Dave I'm going to try building a finger plane any tips uh, Bill Carter who I've mentioned a few times uh, he actually has a criminally underwatched um, documentation where his wife films him making some planes it's the cutest interaction you've ever seen it's multiple different um, videos over it and they don't edit them well and they don't film them well but the explanations are spot on and he actually wrote a book on how to make uh, a thumb plane like the uh, the one that you had there uh, albeit without the sort of uh, finger grip that was an early one of his so so yeah go for it SM Myers says, uh, Ben, make your own version of that telly. Uh, use genuine Fender pickups. You know, it would sound good and look right and cost a heck of a lot less than getting the vintage one. There's a lot more that goes into getting the feel of a, a 50s um, Telecaster box. Um, but yes, you're not wrong. Uh, I think that uh, at this point, what I'm probably going to start with at least is a, a custom shop, a sort of a, a relic Fender custom shop and take it from there. Although uh, there are some people that make intensely cool replicas uh, commercially for four or 5,000 pounds. So yeah, possibly. 
Marsha J. Levine. Ben? Delegate. I try. I try. And uh, it never gets done to the same level. But then again, at the moment, not much is getting done because I don't have time either. So, no, you're right. It is. It is. Okay. Alrighty. Look, guys, I think we're running low on time. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm just going to say thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry I went off the <laughs> off the rails with the tools there, and seem to have spent most of this time talking about uh, the museum. But uh, I am supremely excited about it. So so very excited. It has actually entirely replaced my love of tool. Not replaced, but. Uh, uh, I am thinking about guitars now where for a long time I distracted myself from guitars which were my job with tools and things and I don't think about tools anymore I don't you know sit in bed trawling eBay looking for stuff like you've seen on, on in my collection here you I'm, I'm looking at guitars to buy to then take apart on the channel so it's all fine Final question, um, because uh, Barry Christian asked so nicely, will there be any Crimson Custom Shop guitars on the Great Guitar Giveaway site? There will be, and there will be fairly soon. Basically, once the uh, Great Guitar build-off is finished in about two weeks' time, uh, we're going to also uh, put some Crimson guitars on there. So it will. Uh, yeah. <sighs> Stephen Hatch, how does one tell what model or number plane a Stanley is? A friend has given me a small one in need of some tender loving care. Send us an email to shop at crimsonguitars.com, shop at vintagetoolshop.com, and uh, say Ben sent me to Sam. Send us a few photos and I'll tell you what it is. Um, yeah, a few photos. And we go from there. Uh, <laughs> Garage Master Guitars, if you can't delegate Ben, then you need to hire somebody who's good at delegating. Fantastic, and you are right. Everybody, thank you very much for your support. I sincerely appreciate it. Have a fantastic uh, week, and yeah, stay frosty. My toes certainly are. It's really chilly in here. I love you guys. Goodbye.